sometimes our readings hit it on the head and they bring in the spiritual, the religious, and the natural and historical. And today's readings hit the nail on the head. From the first reading of the book of Samuel, we have history with a little bit of spirituality in it. Paul's letter to the Romans really nails it and says, you know, we believe in Jesus because of the gifts of Abraham and his descendants because the promise was made to Abraham by God that his descendants would be the ones who save the world, in a sense. And, of course, we go to Jesus in the Gospel, and we hear Matthew. Matthew is very human. All his stories about Jesus are his humanity. So he hits what the beginning of the family tree of Jesus, Joseph, Mary, and, and so on. As we go back in history, we realize that the reading we heard, the first reading, is something we hear often during Advent, and we heard it recently on a, at a Sunday Mass. And the reading basically begins tracing the family tree of Jesus. When the prophet Samuel is sent to Bethlehem, and he sent to the, the family led by Eliahab. And he says to the father, bring your sons forward because one of them is going to be anointed as king of Israel. So he brings his seven, but he has eight sons. And the prophet says, no, something's out of order here. You must have another son. And, he, and the father says, well, yeah, I do. It's little David. He's out in the country taking care of the flocks. He, he'll never be king material. Bring him in. Let's see what God says. So he brings in little David, probably 12 years old. And as soon as the prophet saw him, the Spirit of God informed him that this is the one you should anoint. This is David. Anoint him. And he did. And that was the beginning of the ministry of David. Eventually he does become king. That's a whole other direction of the story. But the origin that David is in Bethlehem is significant because it is in the city of Bethlehem that Joseph's family tree comes from. Because he is a member of the house of David. So when Jesus is born, where Mary and Joseph find themselves? In Bethlehem. And looking back on it, it was planned. Looking forward from Mary's perspective, let's go, we, we have to go sign up for the census. And Joseph is the constant there. Joseph, guarding of Mary, guardian of Jesus himself. Now today we, we pause from our Lenten prayers and it's funny because leave it to the Italians to pause from prayer with food. A great tradition has risen up. Now it's probably a two-day tradition because they probably celebrated it yesterday as well. The people of Italian culture set a table that's called St. Joseph's Table with all sorts of sweets and different foods and, and, and pasta San Giuseppe and, and the Zeppola San Giuseppe and every other food. And always a bowl of fava beans. Fava beans are little, flat beans. And the tradition, that tradition started in the Middle Ages when in Sicily there was a great drought and nothing was growing. People were starving. And they started prayer to St. Joseph to intervene. Why St. Joseph? I have no idea patron of, I mean, father of Jesus and guardian of Jesus, maybe that was it. Close to Mary, maybe that was it. But once their novena of prayers started, the drought ended. And during that period, the first thing they were to plant were the fava beans, because they grow fast. And they did. So fava beans have stayed a little symbol of the Italian table.
it's not a universal church symbol. It's a it's an ethnic cultural symbol that's used to celebrate Saint Joseph. Joseph is hardly hear anything about him in scriptures. You hear about his dream. You hear about him because he was related to the, to the family of David. But then he fades into the, scripturally, fades into the background. And the reason for that is the scriptures, the gospels, are not history. They're gospel. They're good news. So they weren't interested, in, except Matthew, because he follows the family tree often. They weren't interested in the Jesus, the man. They were interested in Jesus Christ, God. So their ministry of the four gospels is always to, to emphasize the divinity of Jesus and declare the good news that this man, Jesus, born of Mary, had a simple family, and the head of his family on earth was Joseph, a carpenter. And he probably passed that trade on onto his son. So the church's history with the scriptures, especially with the gospels, don't bother about the history. The, the biological history of Jesus. Matthew does. You heard, you heard it in the Gospel. Matthew often brings up Jesus as a man, and Jesus the man reaching out, and re Jesus the man experiencing hunger and sadness. Very important for Matthew. And you know this already from the symbols of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. M Matthew's symbol is a man, and these come from the Old Testament, and they were applied to the Gospels by St. Augustine in the third century. You have John the Eagle, symbol of his heavenly description of Jesus. Luke, the lion, excuse me, Ma uh, Mark, the lion. Luke, the, the person with, who's really a man and, and a creature, all combined together. So you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John originally symbolically present in the Old Testament and now from the third century applying to the New Testament. But let's go back to Joseph for a second. He's dependable. You have a novena to St. Joseph or you have petitions to St. Joseph. Know that he's dependable. Somehow through the ages, the, Lord, the church has given him the recognition of being the patron of dying people. That's why at the beginning of Mass, we recited that prayer that came to us from the bishop, a prayer emphasizing Joseph and a pleasant death for all of us. So he's a patron that takes care of the church, and he's also the universal patron of the church. So this humble guy... We have a few lines in scripture about him, becomes a symbol of life and a way of reminding us that even the historical origins of Jesus, born in a stable in Bethlehem, didn't hold him back. He still is the Messiah. And when we speak to Jesus, the Messiah, we can speak to someone who knows us because he walked this earth. And he was like us in all things but sin. We speak to Jesus and Joseph because they're family members. Because Joseph is the one who took care of Jesus. And that's like beyond their imagination. That Jesus put himself in charge, in the charge of Joseph. So Joseph was his father on earth. Call, often call him his foster father. But he is the patron of the universal church. And our patron. We couldn't let another day in Lent go by without commemorating this Mass in honor of St. Joseph.